I'm not sure who's the referee on the wall side uh, on the on the open side, but it could be Robert Clock, maybe from his body. <laughs> I'll be back in the second toss. Yeah. So we see now the game is starting. So Bamberg started to to with a cluster here in the in the midfield, and uh, fortunately we cannot really see. So the team is here very hard, physically working at the surface for the ball. Signal from the referee, from the deck referee here. From the position we can see that Akron is going on the defense position, so we assume that the ball is in favor for Bamberg. Now, you see here. Yeah, so Akron is here focused in the defense. This is Niklas Tada with the number 12 who got lost the ball by a very tough hit. Now he received the ball back, passing to Andy Weisenberger. We can see here. Hannes Treiber supporting now here, going up, passing the ball through. Oh, maybe there's a nice glass. Sebastian Lange here now attacking, coming up. I assume he's trying to push the goalkeeper away. But in this in this situation, he could not grab him. Now he's coming again now, pushing the goalkeeper away, making the pass, and it, it's almost a goal. It's Lukas Tadde. This is one of the game stars we've already seen a couple of times. Sebastian Lange in a team play together with Lukas Tarrer. He's attacking the goalkeeper, rising the goalkeeper up while Lukas Tarrer is sitting next to the basket, receiving the ball and immediately pushing it in. So this was a very great one after just 90 seconds of played game. So again, Bamberg could start very, very tough and dominant into a match. This is what they've trained probably a lot to come from the very beginning. Uh, and we have unfortunately frozen. Well, we see here Hannes Hoffmann, the captain, passing the ball here to Sebastian Lange again, who passed through to Jan Hoffmann. Or it's it's fight Hoffmann with the number one. And that's all right. So we can here see Hannes Hoffmann, the captain, who is in position. But even the current team here right now still playing defense position so we have you have missed Wolfgang is back here Wolfgang unfortunately missed the first goal it was a very nice one we could see Sebastian Lange from Germany the German goalkeeper um, who was again grabbing the leg of the of the, uh, the goalkeeper pushing him up passing the ball down to Lukas Tarrer the, the coach and he immediately um, thrown the ball into a more or less empty goal so this is a, such a game style we've seen yesterday a couple of times, if you remember. It, it, it's nothing like, it's nothing magic, but it's so well rehearsed, you see. Yeah, definitely. Th it's so well done, they perfection it. Yeah, that, that's yeah, it. Yeah. <coughs> now the color is changing a bit in green, don't worry. And we have <laughs> uh, three floating objects uh, yeah. right in front of our uh, camera. Call from the referee, it looks like a referee from above. It's a free throw against uh, uh, Akaren. It's attacking the mask or something like that was their signal from the referees. Now you can see here fight Hoffman with the number one who's trying to steal the defender position but immediately he's going up to the surface. This seems to be, I've seen this yesterday a couple of times, this seems to be just a fake action because never this, this per, uh, person is uh, staying or so laying there for, lying there for a long time. So they're just placing a, a person at the basket to force the defending team now here to dive. Uh, to go close or fast to the basket to maybe to have a bit more space for the free throw. Oh, no, no that was a very close one. So that there was Treiber, a who big made a uh, very, gap. very good attack here. And it's uh, Niklas Tada here with the number 12 who's trying to support. He's attacking immediately, bringing pressure to the ball on the other side. We see Akron now in ball possession, trying to bring the ball out of their own half. But they're really, though, the Bamberg forechecking is very, very massive. Did uh, Akron even manage to go in the Bamberg half? Not really. Not it was yet. at the very beginning they did, but since the, the, the ball was scored, you can say, in the last three and a half minutes, Q they call just from the referee. just playing here in the, in the Akron. Looks like side. a free throw against Bamberg, but yeah. no, it's a free throw against uh, Akaren again. So you see here Andy Weisenberg at the bottom in position. You see here Clemens Neumiller of the number five. Hannes Hoffmann here with the, with the captain band at his uh, left arm. So now... Clemens Müller being attacked. 
lose the, lost the ball and there's for holding it's against Bamberg so now Akron is in ball possession with a good opportunity now to get closer to the Bamberg mask let's see what they do but uh, we already have five minutes in the fire in the first half uh, over so uh, Akaren uh, has to hurry up because Bamberg is pretty much in ball control and uh, game control here and on the, the awesome. second pass was interfered yeah. already intercepted by Bamberg Hannes Hoffmann here was still stealing the ball now here it's passing to Andy Weisenberg who's now attacking immediately down the ground here you can see how strong he passed through to Sebastian holding Lange without ball hold it. holding without so this ball this may be a free throw against uh, yeah. Akaren this might be another foul. So Akron now he needs to take care here not to receive a time penalty because we had a lot of free throws now against the uh, against the Akron team so far. So we can tell we can say about five five free throws for Bamberg versus one for uh, Akron. And this is the first you can say six minutes so far. So Akron really needs to take care here not to, to receive a time penalty for attacking head or mask. And you see here even the referee showing advantage. I'm not sure what he's seen, but he was giving the advantage. And here we see several, this is for a fight. Hoffman here now having the ball, passing on the other side. Call from the referee yeah. again, a free Very throw good. against Akarin. I think there is a lot of pushing involved yeah. because the pressure. I think the referee is coming to the surface, maybe he's giving a personal warning. I'm not really sure, but. But as we have seen now, there's seven minutes played. It's a six three, the sixth three throw for Bamberg so far. So uh, and, and Bamberg really goes. Take care. But Bamberg goes in so tight in the defense, yeah. so it's uh, almost impossible not to push them if you want to move yeah. yourself. And the pressure it's they raise on the yeah. Arcade and basket is uh, is again amazing, and the precision they have around the basket, the ball throwing. So if you move, if the current it's players so want to move yeah. Lucas and want to be in the way, they, they it's almost impossible for them but not if to you push. See even they're losing the ball now. There's a first good chance for Arcade you now. Can they come close to the basket? Well, it is this two is two against one. This is a one good very chance, great attack. but it took this a little bit well too long. Done. Ball is free, recovered by a uh, You're seeing the attack Bamberg was very player. good. The attacker was, was forcing the defender to really attacking immediately at the right or the open side. But he was not trying to score. He immediately passed the ball through yeah, on the other yeah. side and made it a certain level of block. They, they don't do the obvious. Yeah. They do the second That's thing. That's it. This was very, very well done by Akron. Unfortunately, he could not make this goal, but um, tried to bring the ball again back on the open side but the player has not been there anymore so just Bamberg player could just pick up the ball and he was in Niklas Tadar here in the, in the fight at the basket who lost the ball and now there's another fast break from from Akron so Akron now is maybe more comfortable in, in coming very quick at the Bamberg basket they have to open up they yeah. have to if they they if they play on like this and just defend they will lose the game so they have to open up yeah. and go for the German basket but this is the risk of uh, getting a fast counter attack and if Bamba comes through with three players yeah. against the uh, normal defense there there is a goal this was uh, so far the best best chance here for uh, Akron here when you have to see a counter attack with two players so you see here even even Bamberg was very dominating the first half so far. Acker is always um, is dangerous and always in the in the um, in has always the chance here to score. So there must be always a certain level of concentration and of course uh, proper play. Also Bamberg is forced to really play, play really proper. Every mistake here can uh, lead to an to a goal. And now we see here uh, five half men passing the ball to Andy Weisenberger giving to Sebastian Lange, who is now coming again back. We probably. I think he's again pushing away the goalkeeper, but there was no opportunity in for a score, so there's another three throw. To be honest, we have now a lot of three throws here in favor for Bamberg, so I'm very curious when it will occur to the first to the first time penalty. So I really, if this is um, continuing uh, at this level, I, I really uh, believe that there will be, a, it's leading to a time penalty. But let's see what's coming on now. Again, so Akron is so often winning the ball, but they don't manage it to bring it s over through the midfield. So now we can here see Akron now very, very engaged in, in their in their defense. They really need to work hard. So Bomberg is coming very massive. You see Andy Weisenberger now with an attack. And he wasn't now. So there's probably the time penalty. I don't know. The head referee is coming now to the surface. 
and we don't have a camera on the surface. Um, vielleicht können wir die Kamera von der Oberfläche haben, damit wir sehen, uh, was der uh, uh, Schiedsrichter gerade entscheidet oben. You see, this is what I, what I assumed, so because we had a lot of warnings for attacking against Akkar, and he has now the first time penalty. Um, at least there's a half time break now, so time is over. But um, yeah, this is the first, first really good opportunity now for Bamberg after the halftime break of two minutes and 50 seconds. They can start immediately with a two minutes power play. What, um, what is re a really good opportunity there for Bamberg now here getting the lead. We can see here two players from Bamberg here now uh, at discussing with the other team leader Andy. Uh, so we see a white and a blue referee now. They're probably trying to discuss with the with the referees uh, the judgments or the decisions. So uh, now here at the surface camera, Hannes Hoffmann is now complaining a lot. Uh, what I think what they're talking about is that Bamberg, Bamberg is a team who really wants to play. And and all these breaks, you know, all these free throws they're giving, they are destroying their game. Because they're saying sometimes just give us the favor, give us really the favor, let us play. Cause Giving a break, giving a three throw always gives the opportunity for our opponent to breathe. They, they, they want to play really, really hard. Of course, they know there's a foul, but don't give the horn. Just let us play, let us play, let us play. And we have given now so far, I don't know, eight, eight free throws for Bamberg in a 10 minutes play, in a 10 minutes a game. And uh, there's probably saying, do you need to give the time penalty or just let the, let the game, uh, games uh, go on? so that we can really uh, attack and really keep the ball close to the basket. So uh, now they're shaking their hands, so obviously there's no no, yesterday, um, no fight or emotions, you know, against the other team here. And uh, we are also here for the German Zuschauer. We are here in the first half, in the halftime pause, Bamberg against the Norwegian Vertreter from uh, Akaren. Um, Bamberg führt mit 1-0 konnte lange Zeit die erste Hälfte dominieren, ganz viele Torchancen rausgearbeitet. Direkt nach 90 Sekunden ähm, konnte Sebastian Lange mit der Nummer 11 den Torwart quasi nach oben ziehen, hat einen Pass direkt runter gespielt zur Nummer 4, Lukas Tada, der quasi dann in diesen freien Platz direkt den Ball reinpushen konnte. Das war die 1-0-Führung. Wir haben noch die eine oder andere knappe Zähne gesehen, aber auch Akeren hier. Hat sie nicht aufgegeben, hatte so drei Minuten vor Ende des Spiels um einen massiven Konter, kam mit zwei Spielern direkt durch. Einer hatte sich an die offene Seite positioniert, den Verteidiger quasi direkt auf ihn gezwungen, dann aber den Ball nicht abgeschlossen und den Ball auf die, also auf die geschlossene Seite gelegt, wo direkt einer gewartet hat. Das war die brenzligste Situation bisher für Ackerin. Ähm, glücklicherweise konnte Bamberg dann tatsächlich noch diese Chance ähm, abwehren. Aber Bamberg muss natürlich aufpassen hier. Ähm, nicht zu früh irgendwie dieses Spiel als gewonnen abzustempeln, sondern immer hellwach in der Verteidigung zu sein. Jetzt kommen wir in die zweite Hälfte. Bamberg hier nun mit sechs Spielern im Wasser, während Akerin eine Zeitstrafe hat und mit fünf Spielern weiterspielen muss. Wir hatten sehr, sehr viele Freiwürfe in der ersten Hälfte. Hannes Hoffmann hat das bestimmt auch angemeckert oder an, angezeigt bei den Schiedsrichtern. Hey, er gibt viele Freiwürfe, wir wollen aber spielen, wir wollen den den Spielfluss am Laufen halten, wir hatten eigentlich schon die Chancen, ihr pfeift das immer ab, ähm, dann gebt die Zeitstrafen oder lasst uns weiterspielen, weil diese ganzen Unterbrechungen geben unserem Gegner die Zeit, Luft zu holen. Und ähm, jetzt sehen wir hier auch wieder quasi das zweite Spiel hier. Äh, Andi Weißenberger bekommt den Pass von Niklas Tada. Wir sehen hier Lukas Tada an der offenen Seite, wie er sich positioniert. Und wir erwarten natürlich jetzt hier eine Aktion. Hannes Hoffmann hier sieht, Lukas Tada spielt den Untertor an und, und passt rüber zu Sebastian Lange. Der gibt den Ball weiter. Erste gute Aktion, Lukas Tade hier nimmt den Ball auf, ihm geht wahrscheinlich die Luft aus, passt rüber zu Andi Weißenberger und der sieht jetzt den Spot, rüber zu Hannes Hoffmann, kriegt den Doppelpass, haut rein, ja, da wollten sie den Pass zu viel spielen. Abgehubt vom äh, Abgehubt Schiedsrichter. Die ersten, die ersten eine Minute 15 der Zeitstrafe, somit zu Ende, Freiwurf für Akeren, ich denke, wenn sie jetzt klug sind, spielen sie diese Zeitstrafe noch voll ins Runde, dann sind wieder 6 gegen 6 im Wasser und äh, Bamberg hier aber immer noch mit der 1-0-Führung in der Hand. Akarin versucht sofort den Ball, äh, den, den, den Kopf und auch von Bamberg zu klauen. Er hat nicht so ganz funktioniert. Bamberg ist äh, sofort im äh, Ballbesitz und geht nach vorne. It's amazing how fast uh, Bamberg interferes with the, with the game of uh, Akarin here and even yep. uh, uh, destroys and takes over the free throw, which should be in favor uh, of the team uh, 
doing it. What I'm a bit wondering about is that, for example, Akron has, has also a very well experienced team. They're not really able to keep the ball in their own in their own um, in their own team. So they're they're passing. Yeah, I don't they know, two, three, three fast. passes, and then the ball is lost. So for of course, if you remember, we had uh, around 30 seconds left in their time penalty. Um, after immediately, not not even 10 seconds, Bamberg got the ball Call back. Call from the referee on the surface. Free throw against uh, Akaren. So it's very hard for Akaren here to really play a proper game, to bring pressure on the Bamberg baskets, um, due to the reason that they are losing the ball quite quick. So Akaren really needs more to manage their own ball possession much better. So when they have the ball, you can you can wait for it. Two, three passes and the ball is lost. They need definitely to, to improve this. So we see Hannes Driver here with an attack at the at the goalkeeper immediately. The goalkeeper have changed, so there was no chance to score. You know, Gesa Todd tried to pass to Lukas Tutter, who broke up now, keeping the ball down. Lukas Tutter here looking for his teammates. And here's the next one. So we see here Veit Hoffmann here in the front. And here's Nussi with the number 14. But the ball here now. Yeah, so there's another cluster. It's a three throw now for Akron. Let's see Akron. Come on, guys. We want to see more than three passes. You please, they need to try to keep the ball in their own position. But now we have the first pass, the second, and you see the ball is lost. So this is this is very very hard for the Norwegian team here, really to get in a good ball oh, position. Oh, this was a nice interception by Akron here. This is what I think. What is more or less the Akron Akron um, favorite game style. So they're trying to catch balls out and then immediately starting counter attacks. This is when they were when yeah. they are really aggressive but, but and successful. It, it was like the game when the Colombians played. Yep. Uh, the the Turkish were what just a split of a second behind them. Yep. They, the Turkish are very fast. So yep. is Akron here. But Bamberg in this game is a split of a second faster. Yep. So the the Akron team is lacking behind and running behind the yeah. ball play and the swimming of Bamberg and this makes it very very difficult to, to build your own game and to yeah. play your own system when you're always running behind the game of the other one it's well done by Bamberg here is here now Sebastian Lange again attacking the goalkeeper of course oh, he's very massive and strong with a strong arm heavy Harper push tries here really to get the ball but <coughs> he's a very hard physical playing <coughs> physical playing player you still see here him Still with the ball in his arm, now here twisting around, passing to Andy Weisenberger. Who is, who is, yeah, his ball dropped in front of Andy Weisenberger. We can see here. It it looks like the 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 ball is uh, repelled by, by yeah. from Akaren because it's always in the hands of the Bamberg players. It's it's amazing. You see them losing the ball, recovering it, losing the ball, recovering it, yeah. and still pushing Tari forward. On the open side, Andy Weisenberger giving and this the pass. a classical this is a combination. Definitely, this was very very close, very well done here. But and then Lukas started now giving the ball back to Nussi, who probably sees Hannes Hoffmann on the other side of the basket, but he was yeah. Now he's, he's immediately got in a cluster, so this is well done by Akron here. Now they know what is important to do. That the attackers here from Akron are making a good job here, supporting the defenders and the goalkeepers here. So far there was not a really proper, uh, not a really 100% chance for Bamberg so far. So now Akron here in ball possession, but the player immediately went to the surface. And this is also quite hard for for a team now here because immediately they lost the ball again as I see here there's another cluster and Bamberg is uh, swimming through the ball now here the captain of Akron who could win the ball but he has thrown it away he expected his players coming from the bottom and taking up the ball but there are more Bamberg players than uh, Akron players currently underwater and that's a big difference right now you see here the pressure the power Bamberg is putting in the, the time they spend underwater the, the attacks they're doing so it's very very frequently, it's constant. It's, constant it's, yeah, yeah. it's like a uh, current doesn't have yeah. time to take a breath. And when you are on the constant attack on your side, your team is, is changing uh, all the time. So they are all again lacking and behind a little bit. Yeah, and always the offer mm. that they bring in. What? Oh, this is the next good chance. Wow. And you've seen this. There was this already was a, a call this before. This was a defense a failure made by yeah, Akron. No, uh, yeah. The player, the defender, nice. left the goalkeeper. Probably was out of brief, attacking the Bombay player, trying to get the ball with a surprise attack. But it was maybe it was Fight Hoffman. He expected this attack. He pushed the defender a bit up, so it's based down. He passed to Andy Weisenberger, and then the the uh, replacement for Time the defender out. was not um, was not early enough at the basket. So Andy Weisenberger could very fast and at the 
at the floor at the bottom coming through the basket and he scored immediately so this was a well done um, play by Bamberg but the mistake of course or the, the opportunities was given by Akron but we have to say um, Bamberg is the superior team right now in the pool yeah. but we're playing on such a high level That's Akron definitely. is an amazing yeah. uh, team definitely and doing yeah. an amazing job and it's only it's only 2-0 yeah. after such yeah. a heavy avalanche of attacks and like we saw with the, with the game uh, of the Turkish team against mm. uh, the Colombians um, the level is so high and the Colombians are so good over this level so the other team must be like incredible good to withstand them and only come out like the Turkish did with a 4-0 yeah. and we have here a 2-0 with Akaren and this is amazing uh, uh, defense work by Akaren and here we start again yeah, we Akaren are in the second half and three in the, the, the three and a yeah. half minutes left uh, here in this uh, second half and Akaren tries now to break through they have at least to score once to yeah. see they are able to break the defense and now there is a heavy attack of one player but he will not make a long oh, there was a blind nice pass, pass the behind the back but he didn't see it the, ball. the player uh, positioned uh, on the it open side Mario didn't see Mario's it made a good job so he received the blind pass but he he has probably not expected or seen the pass coming there so there's the very first very good massive attack here done by Akaren after the 2-0 this is how they should have played from the very beginning of bringing their physical but Bambeck don't let them Bambeck doesn't yes. let them go through it's the first time we see this no. and it was just because Bamberg was not in place normally yeah. they wouldn't have uh, accepted like something like this call from the referee and the cluster is above yeah. and it's a call from the referee and the referee is coming to the surface will be another no it's just free throw up the situation, against uh, so Akadem just this free throw you remember even the second half they have less free throws they have don't have a time penalty so far so it's different judging you now from the referees here they probably the, the complaints of Hoffman here are, are, are working out so that they say please let us play just give us the time and uh, don't don't give the horn any two any minutes, minutes left so two we minutes see here left Hoffman the, second here half. the basket trying to uh, trying to steal the defender position but he's probably not in a very proper position here so this is not very successful <laughs> Now we see here a bit playing around. Of course, Bamberg has just two minutes left and they have a 2-0 two, two lead. Why should they score another time? So at least Akron here is now forced to put more effort uh, in getting the ball. Now here we see Hannes Hoffmann with the ball at the basket, making a blind pass. Whoa. This was awesome again. This was, the, they were concentrating this on Hannes Hoffmann in front awesome. of the basket and they gave the ball to but his right on Hannes the close uh, side to the player and he scored and all the the uh, current defenders were uh, concentrating on Hannes Hoffmann in front of the, Hannes Hoffman, the basket. Hannes Hoffmann, he received the ball, was with his back um, towards the, the opponent uh, basket but he has seen in his maybe side eye that there's Clemens Neuer with the number five coming from the ball so he, he just pushed the ball blind backwards and immediately <coughs> this, this ball was a perfect pass for Clemens Neumann who could with speed and uh, with, with his action and technique immediately score so this was a very nice team play from Hannes Hoffmann here together with Clemens Neumüller. 3-0 against uh, Akkaren in uh, Bamberg uh, in blue and Akkaren in white. We have uh, less than a minute left here in this game and Bamberg is dominating this game uh, pretty much and uh, it will be great to see um, them playing, like I said, yeah. against Colombians yeah. or uh, Flipper. And now you see Sebastian Lange now trying to push up the defender but immediately was the replacement was there. So Lukas Tata here and the open side maybe waiting for the pass and then he receives the ball from Sebastian Lange he has a chance and he scores he scores Lucas Tara here but this is also such amazing Sebastian Lange with his massive body is jumping into three four players they're all trying to get the ball they coming with him he's he's magically pulling the players up from the bottom line and there's still Lucas Tara waiting with a lot of space there was no defender there was not attacker and he even had a even almost two seconds time to score this is this is too much for Lucas Tata. This is a situation he probably always is always scoring. So this was unfortunately not very well defended by uh, by Akaren, who received here the 4-0 uh, with almost the end of the game. So we have now here where the 2-0 half times so score, question. and now we have 4-0 final score. And both half times here were very dominated by Bamberg. We have just seen one good opportunity for Akaren, but was a counter attack in the first half, and this massive attack. Uh, in the middle of the second half when Marius has not seen the blind pass this blind pass dropped at his back unfortunately could not see this it was also a very very nice chance but on the other hand we had Bamberg with so nice beautiful um, you can say dream passes 
We have seen the blind pass from Hannes Hoffmann to Clemens Neumüller. We have seen the, the massive pass when Sebastian Lange put the almost entire defense from Akron up to the surface and was thrown the ball down to Lukas Tada who scored the 4-0. So um, even the, the first game style when, when um, then the first score when Sebastian Lange <laughs> pulled up the goalkeeper, passed to Lukas Tada. So you see here certain certain teammates Petra. who can really play good together. And yep. we have seen uh, Veit Hoffmann, who was attacked by the defender, has seen the gap, passed to Andy Weisenberger, who wants to make this 2-0. He immediately jumped in. Amazing photographical so uh, memory you have yep. there, Thorsten. I'm impressed. So, um, funny fact, um, uh, what do you remember the score that was uh, the Orcas against Akaren? 5-0? It was also a 4-0. Yeah. So we see the two teams against the, yeah. the Akaren, and we saw Bamberg and uh, Gorkas against Akaren, and they have the same score. Who's so playing the, the semi-final then? So Bamberg is meeting Akaren, or who they're playing against? Do you know this? No, I don't know. We need to check this out to see who, who will be in the semi-final then. Question, uh, Thorsten. Mm -hmm. Do you see a different team uh, in Bamberg than you saw last year or the years before? I think the, the main difference between Bamberg right now is that they really love playing. You see how they're passing. The last times they're... They, this, this is for example... Tense, this, more this, tense. Yeah, tense. This game they're playing right now, this is what I know from the league. So when they're dominating, they're playing around, you know, it's a bit tricky, sometimes a bit risky. But in the past, they always played like, so this is how we play, very successful. But then we go into the Champions Cup and it's like, no, we need to play proper. We need to be very honest. We, we, we really need proper chances. Don't and lose, don't lose. And they're changing their, their, their game style. And then they have been never that successful as they have been in the German League. So what they have seen so far, this is what they need to continue. Just play. Just let the ball flew in around, playing around. Have the fun. referees need to be, need to be awarded. They need, don't stop the game all the time give them the chance to, to really put pressure on the opponent, to uh, make them uh, out of brief, to really bring them under pressure, and but then they have a good chance to win here. The thing is, they are already... already um, do you think they are on the peak of their uh, uh, draftsmanship as underwater rugby player, or uh, is it uh, uh, way behind? Because they play more relaxed, yeah. they are and they, they say, okay, we'll, we, we never did the Champions Cup, so there's nothing to lose now. We only can win, so let's go in the game, let's be more relaxed, let's enjoy. I think the main difference is that uh, Bamberg lost two players in, in comparison to last year. So Bela Zani and Felix Weichel, they are not here, who are two really strong players and played even in the national team. So the team needs to come closer together so they've trained really really much they spend a lot of time together they've, this is really if you see Bamberg in their free time this is a family so they're not even training together they're almost living together this is this is very nice and this is the first time you really see that they're really playing each other so so familiar they know each other for 12 years but of course they all even they brought new players in you have always the feeling it's like a core of Bamberg and some players playing around with them but now you have seen certain patterns. You have seen how, how good Andy Weisenberg is playing together with Lukas Tada, with Veit Hoffmann, how Sebastian Lange is making the, the trouble at the opponent baskets and always sees his up playing. You see Hannes Hoffmann who makes a lot of trouble. And also, you know, even players you have not expected here, they are going in the basket, making trouble, and they have always an eye for their team player, for the better player in a better position. And this is, this is quite amazing. So now we see here the next game, it will be Flipper against the team from Czech, from uh, Budweiss. Budweiss. So um, my guess is, uh, I think, uh, and this is my yep. estimation, Flipper is a, is a furthermore defending team yep. and uh, so is Budweiss. But both teams are able to counter, uh, yep. uh, to, to swim fast counters and to attack, but they both are very good in defending their basket. Definitely. So seeing these two, ga two teams uh, facing each other will be interesting. I think Flipper brings a little bit more mass, a little yep. bit more... Um, Probably not experience. I think they are uh, both on the same level. Yeah. But these two teams saw everything, played everything, and it will be interesting to see how they react with each other. You know that flipper. I assume the flipper is coming very, very massive from the bottom line. And the usually attacking style or pattern from uh, from flipper is really to play at the ground floor and keep the ball at the ground floor immediately to have two or, or sometimes even three players very, very close to the basket. So, so Budweiss really needs to to protect the basket. As soon as a flipper player gets in position, maybe the defender position or can steal the defender position, flipper will come massive immediately from the crowd and this is very, very tough then to defend. So um, I, I expect, I would say 
flippers here the, the favor to give in or in favor to, to win this game. Um, but let's see what uh, the Budweiss team is doing then. They won yesterday against Boston, I remember. So they had a 2-0 victory uh, over Boston and the other games they played. To which, uh, Boston, uh, well, it's a 2-0. 2-0. Yeah, and they played against... Flipper Piranhas. And they have played against Remain and they lost 4-0 against the last year uh, victory. Uh, and so we champion. remember that Rixu, that is a Finnish club, played against Flipper. So Flipper was the silver medalist from the last Champions Cup last year. And of course, they also want Flipper. I don't know if Flipper ever won, has won the, the Champions Cup, but this is also one of the main goals they have. I've told uh, with Rasmus and he told me that they have also trained a lot. But on the other hand, they have also some new players in comparison to last year. Um, so they brought in a lot of new players here. Uh, to the Champions Cup and let's see how they could integrate these players uh, into the team and on the other side we see Budweiss and uh, let's see unfortunately we don't have a referee list so we need to ask this one I see I Bob, I asked the referees Bob from Germany on the opens on the on the closed side uh, the I asked the referees and they make the list now step yeah. by step so we they don't